this sound. Let's see if I can get this set up. All right. This wing, it should work. that work okay good evening everyone I am getting ready to have chicken wings now I was just getting myself together and um, the Lord dropped a word in my spirit for whoever this might be you need to hear this because I think some people have this idea that um, you can ignore bullies and people who do you harm all in the name of Christianity. I am I am I am believing. Thank you, Doc. Doc bought me chicken wings. I am believing. I haven't ate and it's been a rough road at the stomach of mine, but nevertheless, let's try it. Garlic honey garlic chicken wings. Guess what I like about this whole thing? The carrot and the celery. Believe it or not. I am eating at my dinner table. Something must be wrong. Something. Doc, you, may, you might need to bring your stethoscope and your um. I'm eating at the dinner table. No, that's in my bed. Whoa. Anyhow. But I, I wanted to say something to you. The Lord dropped this in my spirit. And um, I, 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 I just. I want I want to lick it till it busts tonight because you have some folks in the body of Christ that believe that um, as long as they're saved or as long as they are um, anointed or Christian, then they can continue to abuse you. And you be and you be fine with that. Um, and I'm learning that there are abusers in the body of Christ. I'm telling you, there are people being abused in the church, all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And something is wrong. I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> Excuse me in my old clothes, but you know. Oh, Doc bought me, um, you bought me two, Mama. I 
think I'm going to have milk. Just in case, because of this thing here, you know, it causes problem. I'm going to... Would you believe me that I love I love milk? When I say I love milk, I absolutely love milk. But this thing I look lean, not true. Come man. Somebody with a big body pass here. I won't call any names. Hey, so guess what? I finally got an ounce tooth jacket. And I think I'm going to do my photo shoot in this. Do you, do you, do you, what do you think? Do you like it? I have been playing with the idea. I know I should be eating, but look at the ounce tooth. Isn't it nice? I mean, yo, I think, so I'm waiting for the right, you know, but I think I like it. I was contemplating preaching in it this week, but. I think I might use this for, you know, more of a um, dinner date or, you know, maybe my wedding. Who knows my wedding, my wedding, my wedding. But this might be my new, um, yeah. What do you think about a black shirt on the inside with a silk and, silk and suede bow tie? Black shirt, right? Silk and suede bow tie. And, and nice black pants. Yeah, I think, you know, and you see, this is more, see, silky. So I would do more of a suede and silk bow tie, two in one. And I, I would use the, um, the dog ear color one, the one that's broad and sit right there. What do you think? I think it's a, I love ounce tooth. I think ounce tooth is very classy, very chic, very rich. And yeah, I, you know, look nice. Owns to. I was, you know. What you say, Doc? Doc, honestly, white pants? What is wrong with you? We are not doing a Jamaican Buto outfit, okay? We, 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 we are not going to do. You said not black, woman of God? Why wouldn't I do black with this? Black pants? See, I'm looking for a, a classy look. I don't want to be um, like I'm in the club. I think a black pants with this, a really classy um, material that's mixed with this. And I would do like a suede line, like a police stripe. So black pants, suede line police, you know, sit on my ankle. With my um, patent leather shoes. The, the real nice one. That has the black suede that come across the top. My red bottoms. Y'all don't, don't even start with me, please. I shouldn't even ask none of y'all for no, no instructions. I, I know how to dress. When I put it on, you just go and have to accept it. Hey. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's a, um. I should be eating, right? Maybe I, it's a it's a photo shoot tonight. What do you think about this one now? Now this one. This one. You can talk to me about a different color than black, but I would go black with it again. You all know I'm. You know. I'm very simple. You all don't believe me, you know, but I am very simple. I just like to look decent. And I'm not a, you know, again, a bow tie would go well with this one. Because I'm not wearing a vest on the inside. I think that when they wear the vest with this, it's too much. They, they just overdo it. Then you have this, then the vest here, then the tie here, then the shirt. It just look like one big old step that needs cement. You know what I mean? But I'm thinking... I can do, I can do a bone, bone white pants that has the black stripe as well in it. I could even, if I want to, I could, even though this is black and white, I can do a navy blue ensemble 
accessories and bring it up. You all know I know my stuff. You know, you all trying to, you know, I'm just trying to patronize you by asking your opinion. But you all know I know my stuff. Get out of here. Anyhow, my two chicken wings were not me. <clears throat> all right, one more, one more, and then and then we go to what I'm going to talk about. So you all know that I have been embracing pink for a while. For a while, I thought pink was a problem, you know, but I kind of like it because they make it a problem. So men don't wear pink. But somebody said to me, strong men wear pink. So, I want to do, I'm, I'm doing a photo shoot. Not want to. I'm doing a photo shoot. So, I'm working with new colors that I've never done before. And so, that's what that is. What you guys think about this? What, what color pants you all think now I should wear with this? Dark? Green pants? Dark, you know what? Something wrong with you. I think this is very classy. Very classy. I could do a gray pants that goes with this. I could do gray. Pink and gray is nice. Gray. I think gray. Pink and gray. I think I think gray. Gray with this one. I don't think I would do a bow tie. I do, do a regular. I would do a regular tie. Um. Yeah. I can do a white shirt. With a mixed blend tie that has pink, pink, red, and gray in it. You know, y'all know I love my little, you know, accessories, my 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 pin, and my in insert. You all know when I come out, it's a done deal. Come on, tell the truth. Pink and gray looks good. I, I think I can do a gray. I think a gray, a gray, would go well with this. What y'all think? Yes, somebody said, or blue, blue pants, woman of God, or you mean a blue tie? You know, when, when the colors are a little bit too loud and too extra, I can't, you know, you know. Look at my hair saints. I, 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 I put the gel in it last night and the thing grew out. Oh, look at my hair. The thing grew out of control. So I have to redo it. Lord God. The thing, look at it. It's fully in. So tomorrow I'm definitely going to go to the barber, let him um bring it up to here and fade it out but i'm not going to touch the top how about that i have to look half decent in the people them church i can't go into the people them church like i'm crazy somebody said blue and pink i don't know what about aqua not blue well blue pants are, are you guys just joking you guys are joking you guys are joking right you guys gonna be talking about blue pants you mean blue tie bow tie White, Lady Audrey, yes to what? To one blue pants. You want to see your father in one blue pants with this, with this, um, um, honestly, no. Tell the God honest truth. Pink and blue is pretty daddy. Hi. Hi, Blake. You know, say your father is, is, is tapper, dapper, dapper. Pink, uh, blue, all right, all right. What kind of blue? What kind of blue? Because I'm thinking blue and in my head, but I don't think blue. I, mm -mm. Blue, mm -mm. I think a gray pants. Flat front, no pleats. For you men that like pleats in the front of your pants, you're butu. That's outdated. Okay? The whole thing get up in the front and pull up and look bulgy. No. Flat front. Flat front. Make your front flat. Flat front. No pleats. Okay? And 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 that. So, but I'm going to change the accessories on this though because I want to change it up. It look like I'm in prison. You understand? I think I'm going to take these off and um, put buttons instead. It have, it, it have a, it have a prison-ish kind of, you know. When I saw it online, it did look okay, but... This present thing here where you're lock, lock. Pink and gray. Yes. Lady Clark, I think that I'm going to go with you. Pink and gray. Pink and purple. Pink and purple. No. I, can you guys re realize I'm a man? Stop thinking woman now. Think man. Can you imagine I come out 
First of all, I am already embracing pink. And you know them already have my name all over the place, as you know what. Hmm? Why the hell would you want to put me in a one purple pants? Are you then what kind of shoes would I wear? You oh no, oh no wicked. Oh no, it's very wicked. Pink and gray. That's it. Pink and gray. We 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 good to go. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go with pink and gray. Oh no? Oh no is have no use. Mm -mm. Anyhow. So this one, I am very upset and I'm sending it back to the people them. Now, tell the honest God Almighty truth. Why would you put these big bell on the line? This thing look nice. I'm not lying to you. What the hell? Look here. The thing is so heavy that it make the material look like Augusta. Watch here. Prison, prison break, prison board. Cut off Christopher. Watch ya. Watch ya. No, it's not a. I'm not going to an upscale prison. You understand? I, I was so upset. I said they don't say that this thing is heavy. Look at that. All right, I can deal with this. Okay? And you all know I, I know to fix it. But what the heck is this? I'm not going to an upscale prison. Hmm? Watch it. No, you really put this on here? I really thought it was something light and small. Here, it looked it look like handcuff and it sound like handcuff. What in the name of Jesus, Savior, divine? I'm like, come on, say it. It looks nice and you know I can do my thing, right? It fits exact. It's perfect. But what is with this? So I was going to take it off and do my own thing. Because you all know when I do my own. But no, I'm sending it right back. Right back. This is a crime. C crime. Crime, crime, crime. Eh? No, I don't know what this means. No, look, look here and there. You see it say what? 20 something. You all see this? What does that mean? That look like say, no dear, uh-uh, 24 N, 24 K N, uh, no, no, mm -mm, mm -mm. we're good. I do like the white, I like the style in front, you all know I'm very different, but this right here so, people, people, we, we will pass, but you know, They've been waiting for me to design my own and um, to come out with my own line. And I'm almost there. Almost there. Anyhow. Um, let me wash my hands. I'm almost there. Almost there. I'm almost there. You know, people say, people say I am cocky, I am show off, I am whatever. But you know, it, who cares? I'm just a classy person. I'm a, I'm a classy person. I, I'm I'm very 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 fond of um, fashion and design and colors. I guess maybe that's why they call me gay. Um, but who cares? Um, and I, I like things that make sense and, 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 and compliments, you know. It's just who I am. And, and um, it, it, some people find it difficult to accept me for that. But who cares? It's not going to change. And um, it's only going to get better from up here. I, I, I told folks I'm not waiting for 
no woman to come into my life for me to make it seem as if I have sense and purpose. You, you must already know who you are. By the time she gets here, you should be set. You don't wait for her to set you. No, I'm in a table. Mm -mm. I wonder if anything falls on me something. You understand? You know. Oh, where's the food right here? I have. Oops. Two chicken wings, my salad and my carrot, and my blue cheese. And I have more if I want over here. Amen. Praise him. Y'all think I, I don't eat a lot. I know you guys think I do, but I don't. And when I try to do, I, 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 I hurt myself and overdo it. So, um, but my table is always set. See, see, always set, always set for anybody else want to join me. You can join me. You can join me. Yes, I, I love milk. When I say I love milk, I absolutely love milk. I, and it's the lactate one, not the regular regular one. But, I, um, but, but I, I love milk. I'm a milk person. Anyhow. Um, so, the Lord been talking to me. You know that there are Come on, Brittany, come sit down with your father and, and, and enjoy, enjoy some chicken wings. You understand? Um, there, there is a difference between leading, teaching, protecting, correcting, rebuking, than abuse. Um, and I have come to the sharp understanding that there are some churches that are outright abusers. Now, with me, I'm a sharp preacher, and I'm a rebuking father, and I love order, and I love to have things in, in its right place. And especially when it comes on to my children, um, oh yeah, I don't play. In fact, some of the reasons why um, relationships didn't work for me is that they felt like I was too rigid. But if I, for instance, all right, let me give you one, one, one reason why one lady decided that, listen, this is too much for me and all of that. And you are telling me if I'm wrong. I said to her, when you're wearing white and when you have um, certain... material it shows anybody knows that if you wear white you cannot wear white on the white especially that have um you know different colors so i said to her every woman must have a slip especially when because i'm telling you you may not see in the first person that people can see through your legs or the shape of your underwear or you know but somebody else can so i said to her everybody every woman must have at least three slips black white and nude and you make sure that you put it on it doesn't matter even if your clothes is dark have a protection underneath. Darling, you're telling me, yes, sir. I can, I, is that right? Oh, yes, sir. I can talk to you about a few things off the ear. Listen to me. I need you all to hear me. I said to the young lady, I said, you have on white, and although it's a full outfit, make sure you have a slip. 
The lady said that's too much. She doesn't wear slip and that's old school and I'm not into that and no man is going to tell me how to wear. I said, okay. Well, I want my wife to wear slip. And if that is going to be the deal breaker, let it be the deal breaker. I'm not trying to be bossy. I'm trying to tell you that for God's sakes, one, if you fall, it will protect you. Because maybe the outside would lift up, but you're slip. Two, you have on white and I'm on something white underneath it. Three, you have on one white panty and you can see where it starts and where it ends. What God give you and what the people them store add to what God give you. You don't look good. And you need to take it up. Well, the child gets upset with me. Ah, I said, okay, but then one. So that's why that didn't work. So, you know, and I said to her, when you are a preacher, when you are a preacher, you, you, you have to make sure as a woman that everything is locked down and tight down. You know, you're, you're nothing low cut, nothing low cut, nothing jiggling, get good bra, good padded brassiere. And y'all think this is crazy that a man is talking like this, right? But it's, it's sad that a man has to be talking like this because the women refuse to talk like this. The mothers of the church refuse to talk to the women. So let a man who they say is gay and, and, and off tell you, proper brazier and not the ones them where you, if your nipple protrudes to it, you can see it through. No, proper padded and not the low cut one, the one that... Is up further. Put your cleavage and everything properly in place. Mm? And if you don't like the bone one, you can get the one that have the little elastic on it. But it keeps you together. You shouldn't be preaching and, and everything shaking up and down. Uh, having people distracted. Put yourself together. So, you know, so me personally. So when I was telling her about the proper underwear and I said, Oh, well, well um, that's too expensive. So you know what I did? I went and I bought her 10 sets. Matching lace, proper, found her cup size, and I went. I went into the people, intimate wear, and bought it at that time for my fiancé. And I said, listen, woman of God, you're going to learn to put yourself together. You are a woman of God. Some of these women, and especially the young ones... I don't understand. You say you want a husband, but you behave like a cheap knife. Not wife, you know, knife. Put yourself together. Is it, is it, is it, do, do you want a man just for a one night stand or you want a husband? And I've been, I, I'm watching them and no wonder why they're single. Beautiful, pretty, anointed, young. Why are you not? Now I see why. I said, young lady, No. You have this brassiere or bra or whatever you want to call it. And I see you have on this, um, it was more of a lap thing and it tied to the side and then a split in the middle. So she moved her leg, you can see the inside of her thigh. I said, my girl, you're going to minister, aren't you? You are going to minister. You cannot, you leave that for the date night. You understand? Yes. Leave that for the date night. Yes, we will we, we, we have easy access for some things. Oh, praise the Lord. Mm, shanty and so. Leave that for the date night and we'll be married. Yeah, those, those, those one string pull and everything fall off, leave those for the date night. Those, I will need that for the date night. But not while we're going to church. Mm -mm. That is the wrong outfit, my dear. That is what the young lady wanted to wear. And when I tell her, and it's not, listen. And when I, oh no, you're not going to let me be old before I time. You're not, and she got along, and she got along. And when you look, the nipples are popping through, through the outfit. Then you can see the, 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 the cleavage. And then, and then half of the brassiere. I said, oh God. I said, you need to wear dresses that you can put a slip underneath it. Because as a woman, and especially when you're a charismatic woman preacher, not everybody's charismatic. That's what I really love. Um, Dr. Champion is on. She's another one woman of God. I was about to say, um, 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 my favorite woman preacher is, is, is Bishop Jackie McCullough. But Dr. Uh, Dr. Dr. Champion is on as well. And 
these are anointed women, but they're not that and wild. They're not wild preachers. They, they, they really, you know. But when you're wild and you walk, cheer, and you jump up and down, you need to make sure that you are covered properly. When I was married before, I said to my wife, listen, roll on the ground, jump up and down, lift your hands up, bend down. If anything fall out or fall off or print out, you can't wear it. Nobody's going to see what I, what, what I am serve nightly and daily at my table in the people, public and church. Put yourself together. That's what's, put yourself together. And the lady get upset and upset. Oh, you want to make me old and oh, you want to tell me what to do and, and it's not going to work. I said, dear, sit the door there. God bless you. Next. And I'm telling you, it's some of the most craziest things that has caused me to just be sitting there still single. And, it, and the thing is, and I'm not saying anything that is rude or, or, or unfair. I'm actually looking out for her best interest. No. I find that the 2023 20, and 24 and the women them to come, these women, man, they're hard to deal with, you know, Papa. Especially when they, own, they have their own way. I was in a service one day, and Pastor Champion can tell you, and other deliverance preachers. Other deliverance preachers. A young man was possessed, and he... Start getting an erection right at the right at the altar, and start to play with himself, and I couldn't understand why. And the Lord said, "Remove your intercessor that's beside you." She didn't have on no stockings, and she had hair on her legs, and her hand was hairy. The demon. Let me tell you how sick some of these demonic spirits are. But he was dealing with a perversion demon, a demon with lust and pedophilia. And, and um, you name it, he had it. So he equate, he equate here on her arm, here on her leg, here under her arm. And then she had one of those cut out things. And of course, here under her arm. So he think, well, if the hair is there, then hair must be on your vagina too. And the man start having a wonderful erection and getting ready to, to stimulate himself right at the altar. The Lord said, move your intercessor. Her legs was not shaved. She wasn't wearing a, a, a stocking. She had on a short cut arm shirt and he could see under her arm. Let me tell you something. Call me whatever you want to call me. But what you're going to get from me is truth, training. Watch this. I do not smother. I hover. I cover. Know the difference in leadership. You have some pastors who smother. I hover and cover. That's my job. So when I tell you, shave your leg or put on stockings. No, shave your leg and put on stockings. No short sleeve, nothing. Arms not going to be out. Make sure whatever you're wearing, you have a high cut. Because, and especially if you're chesty and busty, you do not want and wear bra that support you and is not moving proper. Yes. We have what's called spanks, women, women, amen. So you have, you know, you know your bottom is very whatever, and, and your, your hips. Spanks keeps you in place and not jumping all over the place like you have the victory. You understand? Put yourself together. And this is the problem why many, many women have problems with me. Because you're not coming out beside me looking like a sanctified whore. You are my wife or my fiance, and when people look at you, they must see an integral woman of God that is, is well-dressed and adorn herself properly. It's sad that it's a man talking like this today, and not a woman, not men, not, not, not mothers. Mothers are not talking about to young ladies how to dress in the church anymore. In fact, they're competing with the young ladies. Put yourself together. Put yourself together. Anywhere that have a crease, put a little cologne there, a little cologne there, a little cologne here, and, and, and have deodorant that have scented and, and, and mm -hmm. yes, yes, anywhere, yeah, mm -hmm. beside the legs too, and up close so you know what, yes, uh, yes, yeah, spray. 
mm -hmm. behind the back of your leg, yeah, behind your ears, on your neck, mm -hmm. yeah, between your little chest. Then put something there, little powder, and and, and 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 close yourself up. When you pass, this is the hmm, wow. I'm talking about a woman preacher that is very active. Everywhere you sweat, you need to make sure. So I said to her, and you know, you don't have to wear no long gown that it's you're stepping on it, but you want to make sure that your gown is at least over your, your knees. So if you have to go on the ground or you have to bend over, there's enough material to cover you. That's all. The lady said, I'm controlling and I'm so and so. I said, okay, well, you're just not going to be the one for me. And it's just things like that. I lie not to you. Nothing out of the way. Nothing crazy. And I'm like, wow. And these mothers refuse to tell their daughters how to dress. But they want good people to be a husband. Hmm? You, you, you see me. You see me in my little single state. By myself. This summer table set. And I, I am fine by myself. Do not come into my life and cause no problem. And, and, and give me no, no, no. The hell and powder out. Dress properly. That's all I'm saying. Put yourself together. Hmm? When you're going out to minister, especially when you are a deliverance person and you operate a lot in the, the deliverance, I say to all of my um, intercessors that are women, do not wear earrings that dangle. Don't wear any long chain around your neck. I have seen people that demons are coming and the demon grab the chain. I've seen earrings pop out of ears and bleed. I have seen people get strangled. And so... When I talk like this, they think I am just being a bossy. I'm not being bossy. I'm telling you how to put yourself together. You do not want to wear anything too long. You saw these ladies are going to preach and the weave and everything and the hair bouncing. You are not on the altar to be a Dolly Parton. You understand? You're there to preach. Make sure so your headpiece is correctly stationed and stabilized by your head. Nothing too long because demons will grab it. Understand? And if you're going to wear a wig, for God's sakes, braid your hair underneath it and sew that bad boy so that the wig stay on. Because if a demon ever grab it, I had an intercessor and I teach these things that don't know, listen to me. Listen, sister girl went down on the ground. You know when she came back up? All we saw was so, so tiny bump and the wig was down on the ground. They don't listen to me. So these are the things that happen. Public embarrassment. So, I am that leader that is, I, I, I hover, I don't smother. But there's a, there is, there is, there is a demarcation between dictation and abuse. And I find that a lot of people in church and i'm and i'm watching some things and it's straight out abuse it's manipulation it's control it's abuse um all right when you are a spiritual father or spiritual mother and you are leading you are leading your children your leading shouldn't call ble could shouldn't cause bleeding is that good your leading should not cause bleeding. Your leading must interrupt bleeding. Your leading must cause um, there to be understanding and clarity. I have Pastor Fitz, I have Dr. Williams. They're, they're much closer to me than everybody else in terms of proximity, relationship, and ministry. In every sense of the word, they're closer. And um, I teach Dr. Williams and Pastor Fitz. And they follow the instructions. Somebody else will come now. Well, they, they must think that I'm Pastor Williams who just say yes to everything he says. Nigga. Fool. Hmm? Jackass. This is not about me trying to dictate it's about you looking proper and being in your place and that nobody nobody looks at any of my children and say then nobody could teach her listen you should not have a problem to recognize one of my children 
you must know that's one of Miller's picnic. By the time, yeah, that's a Miller, that's a Miller, right? That's a Miller, right there. So, why? How they carry themselves, how they approach certain things, how they respond, how they dress, how they speak, how they minister. They have a father that teach and rebuke and make sure things are in alignment. I don't care how nice your shape is. We are not in church to see your ass and your assets. No, 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 no. I don't care if you have a lump at your bump. This is not it. You're going to put on proper clothes and carry yourself properly. And so I am that preacher that will tell you you look cheap and you look whorish in that kind of something. If you're looking for men to, to swarm you in the church and do not want God, but they want what's under your foot, then sure, go ahead. But as long as you're under my leadership and you're in the church I pastor, you're going to look like a saint and not an ain't. You understand? That's how it is. And so there, there is, there, there is. And, and, I, and I watch some of you. I watch some of you. Some of you got away, you know, it's just because you're new to me. Some of you kick off your shoes and then put on some slippers. And then, and then when you look, you sit down in church, it looks like so you had a full wardrobe change. What are you doing? What are you doing? In church? When you look around, the, 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 the skirt all the way midway your thigh, and you're just looking wonderful. Listen to me. I hear you very well. If me did want you, me I tell you. And if by now, none of you that are around me don't hear some say me want you, you're not it. Okay? So let's get that together. Put yourself together and put on proper clothes. I, I don't get it. This, it's church. It's, 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 you're not here because um, you're to be seen. It's Jesus Christ and him crucified. Huh? That is why you're here. And it is important that when you come to the house of prayer, you represent the kingdom. The kingdom, not the, the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of light. Put yourself together. I was talking, it was yesterday, I was telling Dr. Williams, you know, there was, I had some intercessors with me. And this young lady went, of course, north as usual. So she went up to the door and the person said, Oh, because she, I was behind her, she was in front of me. And she went in and the person said, Oh, hi, Lady Miller. Hear the lady. Hi. I said, that is not Lady Miller. That is my daughter. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and when you look at her from behind, you see, you wonder, you wonder if an accident, <laughs> an incident in one. I said, you must be crack. Mother's two left foot. <laughs> then they say, hi, Lady Miller. I said, that is not Lady Miller. That is my, one of my spiritual daughters. She is here to help me. She works in the Ministry of Helps. How about this crazy wig that look like, you know, it, it, it have Alzheimer's and, 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 and seizure in one. Confused. Then she have one scarf on and then gurgle her, her, her waist and a long tear to the side and walk into the five ball like a bag lady. I'm like, what is wrong with this child? And the mad usher at the door, Lady Miller, look at me very good. Would my wife look like that? Lord bless this food, I pray. Amen. Tell the honest God truth. And here the girl, hi, <laughs> hi. You see when she go downstairs? Uh, listen. You see when I was done with her? She bawled straight through the service. Straight through the service, she cried. Put yourself together. So, I said all about to say this. I believe that Yes, you can be a strong and stern leader, which I am. And I'm very, very strong. And sometimes I have, to, I have to watch it because some people are not able to handle that. Um, that's why if you can't handle being rebuked 
and, and, and corrected. And my strongness, you can't serve on my staff. You can be members of the church, no problem. But anybody on my staff, you're going to have to be able to take some licks. You're going to have to be able to handle truth. If you're easily offended and everything problem, go join the church. I, we will see you after the service. Join the, join the congregation. You hear? God bless you. Nobody that is in or on my staff can have thin skin. You have to have badger skin. You have to have, especially... I have three offices that I'm working in at once. And you don't really find that much. You really don't find prophets that are pastors. So I'm a prophet, I'm an apostle, and I'm a pastor. That's three different manifestations. And you don't really find that in many churches. Then, by nature, I'm evangelistic. And, you know, so you really don't find that. You really... Um, Dr. Champion can tell you, you really don't find prophets that pastor. So that's why I have Pastor Fitz. Pastor Fitz now is more the calm one and will talk to you and call you and sit down with you. And yes, and me now, I'm just boom. That's to the point. And I don't have time for, 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 for games and tricks and gimmicks. No. I, and I don't laugh and smile up with you. After church, we can. But when it's church time, it's church time. So the ones that need the burping and the receding blanket and every Sunday, baby them, I'm not the pastor for you. Wait till Pastor Fitz come. And you can't serve on my team because I'm a very, and especially when I'm in the, in the anointing and at the altar serving. And, and, and my leaders, those that serve at the altar, know I don't play. Because people's lives are in my hands. And I'm not there because me and you are boyfriend and girlfriend. I'm not at the altar because me and you in the bed together. I'm not. And so because when I tell you, pass me the oil, you feel like, oh, my man is asking me to pass the oil. Rag, oil. The, we don't pass boundaries when you're in my leadership team. No, we don't pass boundaries. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. No, no, no. We, we, we don't cross over barbed wire, fence, and security, and alarm systems. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Because when I rebuke your backside, you're not going to fire back and say, who are you talking to? Oh, no, 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 no. no. You're not going to, no, no. Mm -mm, mm -mm. When pastors invade the security boundaries. You're going to have problem in church. You hear what I said? You're going to have problem in church. I don't want my sweetheart. On my prayer line. I don't want the woman. That I'm having illegal cheap sex with. Holding the, the olive oil. But this is what this church age is doing. And they, and they are bold with it. And that's why many of them fall. And fall apart. So. Call me strict. Call me whatever you want to call me. You do not mix the anointing with your flesh. Because you must be a leader. To have hindsight. Insight and foresight. Let me say that again. Hindsight, insight, and foresight. When you are responsible for people's lives, you cannot. And ask me how. Because I've been there. I've made that mistake before. Let me be honest with some of you. I know what it is to date somebody that is in ministry with me. And it, the two don't go well together. You hear me? So, nobody that I call daughter, I'm interested in. Let me say it again. Nobody am I interested in. So, when you come to church, come to work. You understand? The minute, the minute you mix that 
And the minute you cause line of defense and your breach protocol, you are going, listen, how your start is always going to end. If you start it wrong, it can't end right. You hear me? This, these, and, and you know, some of you might think I'm rough, but these are the teaching that must go back in the church. Because you can't have leaders that are praying for you at the altar and the toy you're fornicating. It don't make no sense. And what do you know? What do you know? And some of you, where the left side of your private is, is, is scratching you and itching you when you see me. And you get giddy. Them have, them have some flea powder. You understand? And gold bond and bengay. Just go. I, I, I don't have time for it. And this is what is causing a lot of... Of the Christian church abuse. You know how many young girls. Are in the church. And their pastors are sleeping with them. It is called abuse. Y'all telling me be nice sir. You know better hear me very well. Especially my daughters. You all better hear me. I am one pastor. With the help of God. Because I have some beautiful girls. Oh yes, I do. Y'all are fine. Y'all are good looking. Good Jesus. And I have feelings. And I have hormones. And Lord, sometimes I have to say, Keep me near the cross, Lord. But my duty is to lead you. Huh? Spiritual abuse, physical abuse, and any other abuse. My duty is to make sure you make it to heaven. I must not cause you to go into hell and me you there looking around. My job, and I said it because I'm not perfect. Get me, don't get me wrong. With the grace of God to lead and to be an example and to make sure my calling and election is sure. Some pastors you demons that interrupt these young ladies' life and men and men and cause them to fall and falter. And, and, and then, how you expect to lead people that you're sleeping with? You're a married man and you're a pastor and you have children, but you're sleeping with a girl. What do you think was going to happen? The church was just going to continue to roll on into victory? Are you going to continue to get up there every Sunday and preach? Let me give you a secret. You ready for this one? Let me give you a secret. If I'm going to do wrong, and, and, and I know it's not right, but I'm going to tell you. If I'm going to do wrong, I'm going to do wrong right. Don't do wrong wrong. Mm -mm. Don't do wrong wrong. You idiot pastors. So you go to the young lady in the church. Don't have anything. And she have a need. And you have one too. So you decide to use your need. To get what you want. To get her need. Eh? Listen to me. You don't mess around somebody who don't have nothing to lose. People who don't have nothing to lose will sink you. People who don't have nothing to lose will sink your assets. You hear me? It's not right. But I'm just dropping that for you idiots. You hear me? When you mess around with somebody who don't have nothing to lose... That girl will have no problem to tell the world that you're sleeping with her. Mash up your marriage and the church. So since you're an idiot and a jackass, let me give you a freebie. If you're going to do wrong, do wrong right. Find somebody that is not going to talk because they have something to protect.
I'm done talking. Not that that's what I do, you know, but if I was going to mess around, which I don't, I would talk to somebody who has something to lose. When you talk to the little cheap one, them in the corner, don't have an education, and they're smiling at you, and they know that you're married, but they're still coming after you, and they make themselves available, like a drive through huh? Make themselves very available and very helpful. Helpful, man. Pastor, do you need pastor? Pastor, you want me to carry your bag? Pastor, you want me to meet your church? Pastor, I, I, I can be your pastor. Pastor, pastor. Oh, oh, pastor, pastor. Oh, pastor, let, 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 there's, there's a little dust on you. I was in a church. And I lied not to you. Dr. Williams is online. I let it die. Bless your pumpkin. Now you all know I'm a cheer climber. And I don't have time to go around the corner for a demon. Me, I'll climb a chair and fly out and ooh. So I never had time. I... <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to behave. But, so I climbed the chair. Pastor Fitz and another pastor normally is with me. This young lady says she's one of my intercessors. Says she's holding me up. What is your hand doing between my leg? And the other hand just below. My bottom. So your hand between my leg. So your shoulder underneath my crutches. And then you, are, you lean your head on the, my back. And your hand on my ass. And you're, 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 you're protecting me from falling. Listen to me. I turn around and see. You're looking about pooping on your face. I turn I said, get the. Just do enough and available. You see when I was done with her? What is your hand doing between? And this is the problem. This is the problem. The problem is. The problem is. Some of these people. When they were in a church. That the pastor don't have boundaries. And they sleep with the pastor. And do all kind of nonsense. So when they come to Prophet Miller Church now. They come with that same dirty spirit. And, and work their way up. And think that this is the same thing. That's the problem. So because one church do it. And you get away with it. You think if I come over here. And you run from that place with your dirty nasty name all over the place. And come over here. And think you can do it. And think that well because he's single. Let me tell you something. Church the reason why I am the way I am. Because I know in every situation. Satan is after me. You guys didn't hear what I just said. I am that prophet that if I drink milk, Satan is after me. You hear me? If I turn on the switch, Satan is after me. If I wear pink, Satan is after me. You didn't hear what I said. If I drive a Range Rover or a Mercedes, he's after me. So I know that that bugger don't like me. And I know that for the simplest of things, my name gone up on Facebook. So I have to walk circumspectly. Do you know a young lady was watching me stay in her house? Dr. Williams is my, is my witness. And when she found out that I was single, she came to the church. And kept on coming until she joined the ministry. Are you not hearing me? And why did she come? Hey, Oh, yes. Buy computer. Buy shoes. Give the most offering for birthday. You name it, I got it. One day I was sick. And she was at my house. And... Sick don't mean say. Sick don't mean say. Me don't have a penis. 
sick don't mean sick. Me don't have feelings and him, uh-huh. But she knew what she was doing. The young lady came into the room. No bra on. And have on one of those silky blouse. And her breast them stand up at that tension like when police say stick it up. Then when she turn around. The pants keep itching up into her bottom. I said wait. I said hold on there. Y'all don't understand. See, it will take some of you to understand my warfare, to understand why I'm the way I am. A lot of you don't even understand that the enemy literally come out of his way when they come unto Prophet Miller. I say, yo, boss lady. He said, let me tell you something. Straight, I went straight to Jamaica. He said, let me tell you something. Mister, if your plan is to make me fall and to have me, ask Dr. William, she's right there. I said, if me didn't want you, I could have had you. I'm not interested in you. I said, when you come in this house, put on brazier, put on underwear, and put on proper clothes. You hear me? Don't come into my room. And at that time I was married. I said, don't you ever come into my room like that again. As a matter of fact, take your things and go down. I don't need your service today. God bless you. Thank you. Let me tell you something. It will only take about a year and a half to tell you just some of the warfares I go through in one month. And when you don't want them, they say you're homosexual and you're a faggot. That's where that come from. Huh? When they're dating people and you realize that they're not women, that they're cheap and they're easy and they're disrespectful and they have no manners. You, you just know what you're, 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 you're signing up for. So when I turn down a beautiful looking lady that is sex and attractive and anointed to what, uh, according to other people, but me date you and realize that uh, you are tricky Nikki and whore material. I'm not interested. So yes, I date. Yes, I'm looking for a wife. But if you're not it and you behave, I'm gone. So when I leave, you hear, oh, he's gay. Something must be wrong with him. Why? Because he didn't sleep with you? Because he put down his foot? Because he make it clear that if we're going to do this, we're going to do it right? Oh, he's gay. And guess what? Jamaicans have a vernacular. If fish comes from the water bottom and tell you that it's deep. Believe them. So because I dated you, you gone out there now to spread all kind of lies about me because, and you're not telling them the truth. And what I realize with Christian people is that they rather to believe the lie than the truth. And when the thing don't even make sense, just so that they can have something to talk, they run within the narrative that don't make any sense. That's why they say I'm gay. And that's why it's all over the place. But let me tell you something. If I am going to do wrong, never do it right. The Bible says, he that knoweth to do right and doeth it not to him, it is a sin. You do not enter. Let me tell you something, man. You do not cross borders, leaders. And if you are not able to put your flesh under control, you cannot lead people. I am talking to you, not from a Bible. I've been there. When I couldn't. Have my behavior under behavior. Mm -hmm. And manners under manners. Huh? And know what it is. To cross boundaries. And God, when, when the Lord slap your ass, when God slap you, you're, you're well slapped, you know. And so, you're talking to somebody who has experience being on the wrong side of the fence. No man, the right side. You're not getting back over there. You hear me? So, but I find... That there are many people that are in ministries and the ministry is abusive. Some people are under dictation and not leadership. They are in ministries that do not look out for their souls, but look out for their pocket. 
Are you all hearing me? And I sat down and the Lord said to me, believers in the temple are being abused. They're being abused financially. They're being abused sexually. They're being abused relationally. They're being abused spiritually. They're being abused through the word. How can they abuse the word? They use the word to manipulate, twist, and to convict and convert for their pervert behavior. I was dealing with one young lady who came to me, Pastor Raper, and he used the scripture that the Bible says that what? Um, the husband man must be the first partaker, some kind of scripture. I said, what the backside you just said to me? And sad enough, we have so many churches that have people in them that are being abused and they can't talk. Especially in Jamaica. Where these little young girls who need so much and these pastors who use money and use their situation against them to have them late at night in their church. Watch a ministry when a pastor have one bedroom in, a, in church. Watch them. And, and it's there late at night and not at his house. Watch those pastors who build ministry and have a suite, on suite. What do you need an on suite in the church for? Especially when you're single. Hmm? If you and your wife is there because of prayer meeting and all of that and you stay overnight and I understand that because when I build the church, I want a bathroom and a, a place where I can rest and all that. But I'm going to do that kind of stuff when wife is around. You understand? Because maybe I can't wait to get to home to urge and merge. You understand? Mm -hmm. So, but, but, but why do I need that? And I'm a single pastor and peer women around me and me have one bedroom suite in a full, full king size bed, you know. Saints, I may sound crazy today and I may sound comical, but I'm telling you, there is church abuse going on. The young boys and the young girls are being abused. There are people that don't even work. And pastors tell them that they have to sow and give and do. And if they don't... <laughs> I wish you all believed me. I wish you all believed me. Some people are in church. They don't even have food to eat. But they better make sure they bring the money on Sunday. If not, pastor call them out. You see that pastor Kevin Smith? That so-called died? That's what they've been so hard by itself. But anyhow. If they came late to church, he charged them. There are some ministries that everything about it is geared to abuse you. Geared to abuse you. I believe that when you are in leadership, you must be at church on time. And there's, there, is, there is no... Room for error where that is concerned. If you're late, you do not serve. You sit down. We are not going to now give you the mic after church start two hours ago and you're doing prison worship for you to come now and start over prison worship while prison worship has been going on for about an hour. No, sit your ass down. If you're late, you don't get to go into the choir and sing. You are late. You didn't march in with the choir. You didn't come to prayer meeting. You didn't come to rehearsal. You are not there. Why are you coming to sing Sunday and you were not in rehearsal Tuesday? Sit down. If you do not come to Bible study, prayer meeting, fasting, you do not get to hold any leadership position in my church. Well, sorry, in God's church that I pastor under the auspices of Christ. I don't want nobody to come to church who is not spirit-filled and do not like the things of the Lord. If you don't like Bible study and you don't like prayer meeting and you want to lead and you want to be in church, is a spiritual something. And if you don't like spiritual something, you don't do spiritual sinting. Sit down. 
order in the house. You don't. You don't you don't touch the mic. You don't no no no. You don't like worship. You don't like to come to prayer. You don't want listen. A person that don't like prayer and don't want to come to Bible study. Listen, we have Bible study online. You can sit down in your bed and just turn on the camera and hear Dr. Williams teach. And people still can't be on time. You're home and all. Or people don't come to Bible study. And you can turn on Zoom and be right there and a Bible study. But come Sunday... You, you, you want to whistle like a kettle. Where? Church, when you find that your pastor will give you access to continue to do folly, there is sin in the camp. Let me say that again. When you find sloppy leadership, and it gives you allowance to do opposite from what the word of God says. You don't have to look far. Sin is in the camp. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. I used to, when I was younger, I'm 40 this year. Can you imagine? 40. I would after church, all oh, the long line, girls, girls, everywhere, London, Canada, foreign and USA, everybody, three alone. And I would, Lord God, they will come and hug you and this one give you money, that one give you number, this one give you juice, that one give you, Lord God Almighty. And I was so naive to think that, you know, when people see you, they want you to call, call me pastor, please. And Lord, man. Ask Dr. Williams. I lie not to you. Dr. Williams would have to get a purse or a bag. The amount of numbers, paper, letters, money, you name it. Poor Doc. And they would be there. And that's what used to get me in trouble. Now, I learn from the burns I get. So you can call me rude and disrespectful. But when I'm finished church... When I'm finished in ministry and the anointing and I'm still hot and wet. No, 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 no. Take me through some door. Get me in that car. Take me to my hotel. Get me out. A preacher who just finished preaching under the anointing and is open. Who will sit down and laugh and talk and uh, he, 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 Watch him. Watch him. When you are in the spirit, you are in the spirit and your flesh is nowhere in operation. And your flesh is looking for the tri part of you, your body, soul, and spirit. And so when you come out of yes, God, I hear you. When you come out of the anointing and your spirit connects back with your flesh. Your flesh has worked so hard and your spirit has been so far. When the two meets, what you need is ministry. You're open, you're weak, you're accessible. And don't think because you speak in tongues and you just rebuke somebody for fornicating. The very thing that you just rebuke somebody for, if you're not careful, you'll fall in it. Ask me how, been there, done that. I did not know that after I'm finished preaching, touch nobody, especially the little horny girls them in church that make themselves available. Mm -hmm. They will set you up like a VCR and TV antenna. You hear me? So I don't shake hands and I don't hug, 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 hug. Take me to my car. Because I realize that is the time the enemy always come at me. And I got to be careful. You see the look of smaller children them. And the babies. And the grandmothers. And the grandfathers. Them I will talk to. But you see the look of little, little foxy tail one them. Where their foot look like dressed like uh, uh, um, KFC chicken. Them I stay far from. 
Not because I don't like them, because that's when my spirit open, and that's when they will catch me. You understand me? Jesse and her bells, them will catch me. So me have to, me have to run away from them. After I finish preaching, I have been there, done that. I know that is the most dangerous time. When I leave church, I don't answer my phone. I don't answer my room door, my hotel. You don't know where I am. People don't know where I stay unless it's my armor bearer and the driver must be a male, not a female. And if it's a female, ask Dr. Williams, all of my staff, if it's a wife and husband, I put wife and husband together to serve me. If it is a female, there's always somebody else with them. Mm-hmm. Been there, done that. So church abuse comes into visibility when there is no order and the leaders will make room for error and do not correct it. How church, and I'm, I'm finished and I'm done. How do you know that there is church abuse and sin in the camp watch the integrity of the leader watch how them carry themselves watch how they sit watch what they wear watch who serve them watch who they're connected to watch who they joke with watch who drives them watch who cook for them watch who wash for them watch who give to them One lady by me and, and, and a complete vehicle, car. Another one by me, clothes. Another one by me, laptop. A woman gave me a check for $25,000 and I put that bad boy in the garbage. Rip up that check. Oh, don't play me. Don't play me. Any leader that is licky licky. Wanty, wanty. Two celebrations that used to happen for me. My birthday and my anniversary. I'm not, I'm not married, so my birthday. And I have the best sons and daughters that on this side of heaven. And they take care of their father. And they make sure they honor me. You understand? In between that, there are those who will seed and bless. I have different ranks. I counsel. I have different... Um, methods, how they give, different things of that nature, and it's ministerial. It can be accounted for. Proper tally, beach, tally, tallying. Nobody gives me finances, and Dr. Williams don't know. Nobody. You hear me? Nobody. Even if they put it in my hands, I call a doc. Sister McLean gave me $50. Nobody now will have no secret for me. You hear me? I must be accountable too as a leader. So I have spiritual parents and spiritual fathers and spiritual mothers. I make myself accountable too. Who is your pastor accountable to? Are they a lone ranger? Do they run their own ship? Is anybody, is a, if your pastor passes place and get out of alignment, do you know who to call? These are some areas that causes church abuse and for sloppy leadership. Sloppy leadership. I live alone. I have a two-bedroom condo. And Pastor Fitz and Dr. Williams have a key to my house. I have daughters who have keys to my house too. And they can show up at any time. You want to know why? Because I live what I preach and preach what I live. I am not afraid. They now gonna come here and see woman and all kind of something and all kind of nonsense. I have no problem. You can come at my house. We have keys for my house. And when they come, they know even in my home, there's order and protocol. Anybody that comes in my home, there is, they have to sign a waiver. 
You hear me? I cover myself and them. And I don't have crazy, cheap, giddy, giddy, yaga, yaga women that come to my home and men. I am accountable to them and they are accountable to me. I have legal standing documentations. So when they come to my home and they have my key and they have my passwords and they handle my personal artifacts and they know where my things are and they see and hear what, stay right here so. And they, you'll never see one daughter by herself. There will be two or three. They come together. They sign out and they sign in. And they speak to Dr. Williams. We were here. We we're gone at this time. They sign. They leave in the time out book, the writing book. What was done? Order. You want to know why? You have no room for the enemy to move. So those of you that say, oh, he might pay women around him. Shut your mouth. And go sit down somewhere. Because you know what? You know what's so funny? With all the nonsense that people say about me, you know, it's all speculations. You know, not one of them ever can come with proof to say he's homosexual. You hear me? Not one can come and say, I molest their children. Not one can say, I call and beg money. He can't say it. They have no proof, but it's out there like that. My Range Rover is not the church by it. It's not. The, in fact, I don't get a salary from the church. Grace and mercy and the will of God. Watch him. Mm -hmm. I am drain the people, them. Mm -hmm. I am drain his people. And, and they're like a fool giving, giving them money. No, dear. No, dear. No. Signs and wonders and miracles and a favor from the Lord Why that Range Rover out there, sitting out there. And it's the best one on the lot. You hear me? Watch me this year. I'm upgrading, by the way. Watch me. I believe that when you live for God, God will live for you. It sounds strange, but it's true. That Range Rover outside, payments on that is almost $1,000. And I have not missed one payment. And God has taken care of it. From the church went through the transition. Not one of them called me and asked me, Pastor, how you pay your rent? How you pay your bills? They don't care. Some of them are not even faithful in, 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 in their tithe. So if I was the kind of preacher that was depending on church and people to take care of me, I would be in trouble. Men and women of the gospel, if you live for God, God will live for you. He will take care of you. And I find, this is my final, this is my final point. When you don't live for God, you will abuse the people that God gives you to lead. You will sin. You will mess up. You will, you will compromise. There was a time where I was like, this things go on. And God said, enough is enough. Last one, a year and a half ago, I came in this house and I pulled the, I said, everybody out. I don't care how long you've been with me. I don't care how long you've been oh, um, um, armor bearing. And that should tell you, the longer you're with me, you should be behaving yourself. But you're gossip and you're all over the place. People know my business. People know my credit score. People know my information. They know if I am sick. They know what medication I'm taking. One lady said, oh, right or right, is, is, is because I'm pumped full of medication when I'm behaving that way. When people are in your personal space, if they never come into your house, they wouldn't know. And it was just a, a free for all because they know I'm kind and I give, and they thought it was okay. I said the abuse stopped. And I just yanked the plug. Everybody out, and I reset the house. When you compromise with the church, you will be responsible 
for the lives and the souls that are led down the path that you carry them down. You can't be in my house and I talk about me on my phone. You can't be driving my car and people in the church that are enemy to me, you are friends with them. You can't be in my leadership steering committee team. You can't be on the team that, that, that takes care of my health and my and food. You're feeding me and my enemies are your friends. Get out. Take up your things and go. You can't be because you're you are my armor bearer. You don't tithe. You don't come to church on time. You stir up trouble in the church. Everybody can get along with you. But oh, I'm pastor's armor bearer. So people are, are people are taking abuse from you because your pastor's armor bearer. And when they look at me, they say, then if pastor's what's going on, I don't say anything. And, 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 and for years, I let that thing went on. And God said, you are responsible. I put down my foot. And one lady who don't, Come to the church and don't have nothing good. Call me. I can't believe that this son so sister, you did that to her. And look how long she's been with you. Get off my phone, nigga. Get off my phone. I don't care where we're coming from. The things of the Lord. It, this is not BFF. This is not, no, 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 this is not Saturday Night Live. It's not free for all. This is ministry. This is accountability. This, you are accountable. And you've got to watch how you carry yourself. Watch how you behave. Watch who you connect with because lives are at stake. Don't you think me you come a long way. That's why you should be yourself. That's why you should know what is wrong and right. I don't fight for the foolishness. Uh -uh. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. How you do that to the girl? Look how long she's been with you. Oh yeah? I am, I am, I am almost sure if you cannot rebuke anybody in your church as a leader, it's because you're, you're, you have crossed the line. If you can't speak truth to any leader in your church, I'm almost sure, 99.99%, it's because you have crossed the line. And because you've crossed the line, you can't rebuke. You can't set your house in order. And when that happens, sloppy leadership will have people who live sloppy lives. There's a breach. Absolutely. And so, the Lord is showing me some things that leaders have been abusing, abusing, abusing the members through omission and commission, through 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 leadership, through money, through 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 um, sexual um, perversion, and a lot of the reasons why churches are falling apart now, it's because pastors refuse to set the record straight and to live holy and live upright, and so it causes there to be a complete challenge in the body of Christ and the abuse starts and there's a couple ministries that the Lord been talking to me about and I will be calling them in the morning oh yes I will be calling them in the morning because the Lord showed me and I know I'm not missing. And I know I'm not wrong. And the Lord said, man of God, if you don't call and warn those pastors, the young people under them are going to backslide. And they're going to lose their way. Warn 
the house and warn the pastor. Saints, if your leader who leads you encourage you to do anything that is against the word of God, open your mouth, speak. The Lord is not going to cover them in their mess. I believe one of the reasons why churches are messy is because some of you remain silent or remain quiet while the abuse and the folly is happening. Open your mouth. You see something, say something. Too many churches and the church is getting a bad rap because too many leaders have been uh, abusing and misusing the body of Christ and the children of God and they're not saying anything. Hear me today and I'm done. Church abuse is serious. And 99% of the time the abuse is coming from the pulpit and it's coming from the leadership. And it's coming from the leadership of the house. And if the leadership does not correct. When there is things out of alignment. Watch it. When a leader sees that things are out of alignment and corrects it. He may not be perfect. She may not be perfect. But when they correct it, you can trust them. But when they do not correct mess. And allow it to happen. You are in a wrong church. You ha there is reasons for causation and for accusation. You hear me? They love what they do in yes, mommy. They love what they do. Church abuse is serious. I say this to everybody. Open your eyes. Look in your ministry. Look around. With some of the things you just heard me say, look around. Look at your ministry. People lead in worship that don't come to that don't come to choir rehearsal. Huh? People that are preaching and they don't come to Bible study. Watch how pastors and leaders and members operate. Open your eyes. Do not. There's too many bleeding happening in the church. And I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. If you have a leader. That does not correct and rebuke, reproof and move you away from sin. There is a breach in the house. You must not join it. I pray that somebody is hearing me. You may be abused. You may be going through some stuff and you don't know who to talk to. Reach out to us. We will help you. It must stop. It must stop. You know how many boys have been turned out by pastors and homosexuality here in the United States? You know how many young girls have had abortion for their pastors? It must stop. It must stop. You know how many marriages that, that went under? I was reading one of this great prophet, what's his name again? Um, prophet Brian Kahn. It's all over Facebook. So it's not something that I am saying. It's on Facebook. His armor bearer. He and his wife was having an issue. And the pastor, Prophet Brian Khan, started to counsel them. How you end up counseling the people, them and sleeping with the man's wife. They have issues in their marriage and they came to you and you end up sleeping with the wife it's all over social media look it up type it in you'll see it saints i'm telling you we must protect the borders of the church and one of the reasons why we have sloppy preachers and sloppy people that are ministering to us is because you the people sit in the pew and do not say anything there must be whistleblowers. There must be somebody to say this is wrong. There must be somebody to say this is not of God. This is not scriptural. This is not biblical. You see something, 
say something. Church abuse is real and it's happening too often. I hope you hear me today. I from my from my table over my my meal. Open your mouth. We have too many pastors and leaders that need to be delivered. Too many of them are opening shop and as soon as they mess up, they shut down shop and they start somewhere else and they leave over here and they go over there and everywhere they go. Ask me, been there, done that. In the name of Jesus Christ. Man, I'm, I'm telling you, it, Evangelist Mac, they're going to have to eat us, you know, because it's time for the church to be the church and the people be the people. It's time. Can you imagine you come to church and, and you can't trust your pastor, you can't trust your leaders, you can't trust the ministry with your children? Anybody in church that is working over children, they must have a background check. Oh, yes. They must have a background check. They must have a clean criminal report. I don't care if you, if this happened 10 years ago and it was in the past. If it's on your criminal report, you are not. No, no, no. Just in case that demon want to creep back up. Uh, if your criminal report is not clean when it comes back, you go and go and go into main sanctuary. You hear? Join the join the, the, the maintenance, join jo, join the, the not over the children. Talking about your delivered. No 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 me not putting butter a puss mouth. Mm -mm. Anyone that works in youth ministry. And works in children ministry. And work with um, pubescent children. That is learning about their body. And is all over the place. And giddy, giddy, giddy. Must have solid focus. Men and women that's leading them. Preferably married folks. Leading your children. And if you have young people over young people, they must be accountable. And they must be sober young people. You have people, anybody that is counting your money, background check. Some of them have sticky fingers. Mm -hmm. You must know them that labor among you. That's what the Bible said. Know them. I know this teaching might not be what you want to hear today. And it may not be what you like. But hear me today. The church that we are seeing now. Has allowed too much to happen. This modern day church. Has allowed too much foolishness. To happen on the front line. Because of these teachings not being taught. Anybody. That is in pastoral ministry. Must be people that are respected and honorable. People that the child and the oldest can say, Good morning, pastor. Good morning, evangelist. Good morning, elder. Good morning, deacon. Anybody that you're putting in leadership, the entire church must see them as people of notable, reputable character. And if it's questionable, do not put them in position. I don't care if they're the ones that Wash your car and, and clip your toenail. No room for the enemy. And if you want to work in ministry, people must know you. People must trust you. They must see you. Can depend on you. Your yay is your yay and your nay is your nay. You're accountable. You're dependable. You're trustworthy. I wish I could teach some of Funu church people. You have uh, evangelists and the evangelist leg and thigh uh, and is always showing in church every Sunday. She always have a split problem. 
Huh? Look like she should tear her, 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 her outfit every Sunday. One long spit coming up here and walking like a Uchi mama. Blows low and breast high up and, and weave to the side and, and, and baby here and, and uh, sit down. Sit down. You are not ministry quality. We need sober people. We need people that the church will follow and people that are in leadership that can be led without any concern. I'm, that's just my teaching. That's how I am. And I'm not changing it. I'm not changing it. I'm not changing it. You're not on praise and worship for people to see your breast line and what kind of panty you're wearing because your skirt's so tight that if you cough, the zip break. Hmm? They can't bend over. Huh? Watch them. They're in church and they can't cry because if they cry, they, they, they make up and the and eyelash and, 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 and they're more into themselves than into worship. Watch those kind of people. You put people that come to church. You put people that's ready to serve. You put people that are anointed and holy. You put people that is ready, accountable, can take rebuke, can take instruction and love Jesus Christ and on their way to heaven. Those are the people you put around you. Don't put the ones around you that's there for fashion and fame. Church abuse is serious. And I really, I'm going to do a whole series on that. Maybe somewhere in the summertime. But the Lord spoke to me about that. He said, it's serious and it's happening. And people are crying. And I pray that somebody is hearing me teach tonight. That will say, Pastor, you help me. Or I need help. Or what you're saying is happening. Give us a call. We'll talk. I'm going to finish my one more chicken, chicken wing and my carrot and my celery. The Lord bless you. Thank you, Doc, for sending me my chicken. The Lord bless you. I will see you on the whole campground. We're getting ready this week, weekend for a wonderful time in the Lord. See you in the presence of the Lord. God bless you. Church abuse is serious. It's happening. Look around your church and you'll see it. Mm -hmm. Let's clean up the front line, church. Leaders, let's clean it up. Let's clean it up. Let's clean it up. It is what God is saying to us today. Clean up the mess in the church. Clean it up. Clean it up. On the choir, on the praise and worship, on the usher board, in the ministerial quorum. Clean it up. In the intercessory. Clean it up. The, the, yes, those that count the money. Clean it up. Clean it up, 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 clean it up. If we're going, if we're going to have clean church, clean hands and pure heart, if we're going to see the presence of God come back to Zion, those that are in leadership must love God. It's not enough that they know God. Does God know them? It's not enough that they're in ministry working and God don't know them. Clean it up. 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 You, 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 you married men that calling single women at night. Clean it up. 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 You single women that going after people's husband. Clean it up. 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 Uh huh. You, you young people that go to the club and singing on the choir Sunday morning, leading worship. Clean it up. 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 You deacons that drive the church bus and feeding on the little children and butter man breast. Clean it up. 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 You men and women that are cooking and, and, and selling and don't tithe and don't come to praise and worship. Don't, don't, don't come to Bible study and, and Sunday school. Clean it up. 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 You pastors that are counseling women by yourselves and, 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 and don't have recorders and don't have nobody accountable. Clean it up. 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 Mm, going to dates and dinner talking about its ministry. Clean it up. Clean it up. Clean it up. Clean it up. You pastors that are going out of town with the sister. Hmm? Far out of town where nobody can see you. Huh? For your for your for your midday rendezvous. Clean it up. 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 
You pastor's wives that know that your husbands are up, out, right, dirty, and don't want to talk about it. Clean it up, clean it up, clean it up. I, hey, I hear God tonight, and I hear him, I hear him, I hear him. Some of you first ladies that are last women, clean it up, 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 up. Clean it up. You know that your husband is doing wrong. Clean it up. Mandora behind the Asata. Clean it up. 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 You praise and worship leaders that are, are against each other and competition hmm? for the pastor that is married. Clean it up. Clean it up. Clean it up. You church sisters that are in the kitchen that can't get along. Clean it up. 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 You ushers that don't like people and gossip. Clean it up. Clean it up. Clean it up. Help me tonight. I know I'm in it. I know I'm in it. You pastors that do not check the money and put it in the account. Ah, and put money in your pocket before you leave. Ah, people's offering. You don't do proper. Ah, you don't have an accountant. Oh, clean it up. Clean it up. Not paying the church rent, but you have a new car. Clean it up. Clean it up. Clean it up. Mm, people in your church don't have food to eat. Ah, oh, but you rob them. Clean it up. Clean it up. You pastors that are going to the sister's house to pick up dinner. Mm -hmm. But stay a little longer. Uh -huh. Clean it up. 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 You pastors that your children are wild and doing all kind of mess and you won't rebuke them. Clean it up. 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 Your children are out of alignment, but they're still leading. Clean it up. You, you, your family members, you know, you have some people in the church that feel like it is a family church. Clean it up, clean it up. I don't care if your auntie put on the first brick and your uncle put on the first uh, two dollars. Clean it up, clean it up. This is not a family church. No, it's not, it's, not a, it's not a Fred and Company church. It is the church of Jesus Christ. Clean it up, clean it up. You pastors that will not spend time in the presence of the Lord and you're running down for the red dot seal and you want the best suit. And you don't spend time in the word of God. The only time you open the Bible is when you're on the, on the pulpit. Two seconds to go there to give people sloppy, leftover uh, messages. Clean it up! It's not no family church. Clean it up. Clean it up. It is time for us to go back. To the whole landmark. I'm sick and tired of it. Clean it up. You first ladies that sit on the phone and gossip. And then come to church on Sunday and prophesy. Thus said the Lord. Huh? You first ladies that abuse other women in the church. Because your husband is messing around with them. Uh huh. You first ladies that know your husband have an eye on the sister in the church and the sister don't have a clue but you're mistreating the sister because your husband want her and not you and you're abusing her. Oh yes, I see it. Pastor's wives setting up women because they're jealous. You women that are fighting pastor's wives and disrespecting them. Because you are outright with the pastor. Clean it up. The Lord is speaking tonight. Clean it up. Clean it up. You're married pastor. Why are you not with your wife? You're married pastor. Why are we seeing only your picture on, 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 your, on your Facebook and on all the, all, all the church men? Why you don't have a picture of your wife, pastor? Pastor, why is your wife not driving with you in, 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 in the same car with you on a Sunday? Pastor, where's your, where's your wife, pastor? Aren't you married, pastor? Married, pastor? Why are you with a single woman? Sir, where's your wife? Where's your wife? Where's your wife? Pastor, why are you not wearing a married ring when you come out with us, Pastor. 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 It's too late. You call first lady, let her know you're still out here with us young people. Pastor, clean it up. I, I'm, I'm, I'm so sick of it and God is too. And I believe he's talking. And we must have order back in the house of prayer. Please share this video. And let them know that there's a crazy prophet online. That's coming down their road because God is looking 
and we must be trustworthy prophets. We must be trustworthy men and women of God to speak to the house and set it in order. If we carry the title, we must handle the assignment. You hear me? The title is because you are 100% in the assignment. It's not because it's a nice fancy title. It's because you can do the job. You're trustworthy and God knows he can depend on you. I am the right Reverend Dr. Prophet Sean McKenzie Miller. May not be perfect and you may not like me, but I'm telling you right now, church abuse is, re is real and it's in the house. Clean it up. God is looking. God is looking. And he's holding us accountable. Until then, we'll talk. God bless you. Love you. Talk again. Bye-bye.